The next thing that I want to talk about are color spaces and color profiles. Now this seems to be a topic that confuses people, but there's no particular reason for it. It's pretty straightforward. Two of the main color spaces are RGB and CMYK. If we go under image, you will see RGB and CMYK. There are some other color spaces. For example, index color is 256 colors is saved with the image. That's, uh, for example, a web GIF image. There's grayscale, which is just a straight black and white image. There's lab color that I've never once used, so please don't hurt your head with it. And multi-channel is more complicated. Don't worry about that one either. So for right now, we're going to focus on RGB and CMYK as two examples of color spaces. In this example, this color graph as a whole. Everywhere that you see the color theoretically represents what the human eye is able to see. Inside of this we have little triangles. The smallest one in orange represents sRGB, which is one of the dominant color profiles. A little bit larger than that is another triangle, which is Adobe RGB which is another color profile within the RGB color space. And lastly, we have this really big one called Profoto. These are three examples of RGB color profiles. And what this chart represents is this little orange one. This says that this is the amount of colors that sRGB is able to display in theory. It says that this area is what Adobe RGB is able to display, in theory. And this really big one, Profoto, that hangs outside of our visible spectrum of the human eye, is theoretically what Profoto is capable of doing. And this little RGB example right here shows you how red, green, and blue colors interact with each other. So by mixing red and blue, you get a violet. By mixing green and red, you get yellow. And mixing blue and green together, you get a cyan. Personally, that hurts my head. I can't color correct when I'm working in like this inverted color mode. I much prefer CMYK because CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is effectively the same exact way you learned to paint when you were a kid. Red and yellow make orange. Red and blue make purple. You understand? So what I like to do, and the way I'm going to teach you, is to make CMYK corrections within the RGB color space. Now this shows up much later in the course, so don't overthink it. I'm only showing you that how these colors interact with each other, they even hurt my head, and I've been doing this for an entire career. What we're talking about here are going to be the color spaces. And ultimately, I've heard and seen a lot of different points of view on this. A lot of different points of view. And I'm going to try and simplify this for you as best as I can without oversimplifying it. sRGB is a color profile that you want to use if your work is primarily used for the internet. Okay, so if what you do is being posted on the internet, use sRGB. Another example for sRGB is when you send it off to a, uh, a third-party print printing company, not press printing, but where they do one-offs, like a canvas print or postcard prints or things like that, those run off of digital presses. As I said earlier, digital presses are a little bit differently. In a case like that, they're going to want you to send them their files in sRGB. And the reason that they do it is because sRGB, even though visually it looks like it's a smaller color space than Adobe RGB, it often has brighter colors. The images have a little bit more snap to them. They're a little bit more visually interesting. It gives more life in the flesh tones. Now, it's not so much that you can't do that in Adobe RGB. It's just that their way of working is just kind of, well, we don't trust the photographer, so we're going to do it sRGB. So uh, here's the thing. Professional photographers will often use Adobe RGB because Adobe RGB is what's used in um, the printing world. Uh, so when you're going to ship it off to be printed on a press, ultimately it's going to be turned into CMYK. 
However, because the visual colors aren't often as bright as sRGB, it's an easier conversion when you go down to CMYK, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Lastly, there's Profoto. Profoto has the largest range of colors. A professional color person, a professional one, is going to tell you you should always work in Profoto. And the reason makes sense, you're going to have the most amount of colors. When you work in a program like Lightroom, which we'll talk about shortly, Lightroom is going to be using Profoto as its basis. As the first profile, it applies to an image while you're working on it inside of the program. It's after you export it out that you would tell it if you want Adobe RGB or sRGB. That's another topic for another point in time. But ultimately, what I'm trying to get across here is Profoto has the most amount of colors. However, it's a little bit overkill. So a professional color person is going to say use Profoto. However, in my world, per, per, professionally, um, a lot of what I do is largely going out to web-based use. Some of it goes out to uh, printing use. And I never know which is going to be used when. So I default on the side of caution. And I do all of my work in Adobe RGB. Uh, and if I wanted to have that visual punch of sRGB as close as I can, then I will intentionally do that. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to leave my hands and go to some other person to make this CMYK conversion. For you in your own uh, studio, it's up to you to choose which you want to use. When it comes to working in CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, the problem with it is it's such a small color space. Like, it's really tiny. It's falling in here somewhere. I don't even know where it falls, but it's really bad. And I'm going to show you an example of what would happen if I turn this image into CMYK. If I go Image Mode CMYK, you see what just happened? I'm going to go backwards using the History palette. This was RGB. And that's CMYK. Now, this CMYK, this version of it, the way that it represents this is based off of the color profile. Photoshop has a default color profile that it's going to be uh, applying for you to visually see this. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it, by default, it's very, very weak. Now, in that example, it was a severe change. When you shift color profiles, uh, the amount of shift changes. Sometimes it's minor where you can't see it, and other times it's major where you can. So choosing your color profile now is important so that going forward you always choose the same one every time so that you get predictable, consistent results. And all those topics come up later when we get into the color, uh, color correction part of the class.